Hey guys, as you know Max here. Let's revise the cranial bones with a cool mnemonic. So, the mnemonic is. Pest off. Where. P stands for parietal bones. E is for ethmoid bone. S is for sphenoid bone. T denotes the temporal bones. O is for occipital bone. And lastly, F is for the frontal bone. I will be repeating it again for you guys, so stay tuned with us. And thanks guys for making me super hit. Thank you Max for such an informative introduction. Okay guys, so Max just made it easier to learn about the cranial bones. Sphenoid is one of these eight cranial bones. Cranium is basically the superior aspect of the skull. Its function is to protect the brain. Well, sphenoid is one of these eight cranial bones as I told you. Do you guys see how this bone resembles a bat with outstretched wings? That's exactly how you will remember this prominent irregular bone which is present at the base of the skull. Now, this bone is actually called the keystone of the cranial floor as it is in contact with all the other cranial bones. You can also see that it looks like a butterfly as it has wings like a butterfly. Well guys, we also know that it is an unpaired bone like some of the other cranial bones which are the frontal, occipital, ethmoid and vomer. Our sphenoid bone is the most complex bone of the body. Why? Well, because of its features and the soft tissue structures such as the cranial nerves and parts of the brain that are associated with this bone. Well guys, its name is derived from the Greek word sphenoidus, which means wedge-shaped. You can see that it's wedged between the other cranial bones. Well now, if we look at the four views of the skull showing the sphenoid bone, we have the lateral view from the side, the anterior view from the front, the superior view from the top, and the inferior view from the bottom. Well, if we look at the superior view, which is the top view, we can see that the sphenoid bone is located at the middle part of the base of the skull. It is sitting anteriorly or to the front of the cranium, contributing to the middle cranial fossa. And it also contributes to the floor and sides of both orbits. As I said earlier, this bone attaches with all the bones of the cranium. So, it has many articulations. Well, to be precise, we can say the 12 bones. For ease, let's divide them into paired and unpaired bone articulations. The unpaired bones include frontal, occipital, vomer, and ethmoid bone. Paired bones include two temporal, two parietal, two zygomatic, and lastly, two palatine bones. Okay guys, so we just talked about the articulations. So basically, these articulations are maintained through sutures, which is a type of fibrous joint that exists specifically between the cranial or the facial bones. Now, we have four main sutures associated with the sphenoid bone. First is the sphenofrontal suture, then we have the sphenoparietal suture, thirdly we have the sphenosquamous suture, and at the last we have the sphenoocipital suture. These sutures are also the common borders of the sphenoid bone. Okay, so first we have the sphenofrontal suture, which is formed by the articulation of sphenoid with the frontal bone. Now it is meeting literally with the inferior posterior edges of the frontal bone. Next we have the sphenoparietal suture. So guys, as the name indicates, it is the articulation of the sphenoid with the parietal bone and it also forms a common border with it. Cherion is the characteristic of the suture and it is basically the region where four bones join together. These four are frontal, parietal, temporal, and sphenoid bones. 
Now the suture is present on the side of the skull and behind the temple. So next we have the sphenosquamosal suture which is with the temporal bone bilaterally forming a common border with the squamous part of the temporal bone. Okay, so lastly we have the sphenooccipital suture with this occipital bone. This can be seen when we cut the skull cross-sectionally. Now this suture is particularly useful for forensic assessment of skeletal remains. Since another name for this suture is basio-occipital synchondrosis and it disappears after the age of 25. As synchondrosis is a primary cartilaginous joint found in developing skeletons. Okay guys, now we're moving forward to the structure of the sphenoid bone. So if you look at the dorsal view, we can observe that it resembles a bat. Just like a bat, it consists of a body in the center with wings coming out of it. The two lesser wings can be seen on the anterior part of the body. And from the lateral side, we can observe two greater wings. And two pterygoid wing-like processes which are directed downwards from the junction of the body and the greater wings. And well between the lesser and the greater wings, we can see a cleft which we call the orbital fissure. Now it provides passage to the three motor nerves to the extraocular muscles of the orbit. Oculomotor nerve CN3, trochlear nerve CN4 and abducens nerve CN6. So guys, this was just the introduction of the sphenoid bone. Now we'll talk about the details of its parts and its anatomical features. Thank you.